Okay, so for the last section of today's session, we're going to talk about some technical details here about the, the types of images that you can deal with on a computer. Um, and this is important because you're going to be creating images and then exporting them as different types and publishing them to the web. You'll be publishing them in actual printed documents, and so you'll need to understand um, what file types you're going to be working with and what, um, what kind of output you need to be able to create. So in general, for the sake of this class, there are two different families of images that you'll create um, that exist in the world too. There are bitmaps, um, which are essentially just collections of squares, collections of pixels. Um, and so if you look very carefully at this example here, if you zoom in, you can see these different squares here that lots are black, some of them are gray around the edges and kind of fade out to give kind of an edge to that two there. Um, on a screen and pretty much anywhere um, that you look electronically, all images are ultimately just shown as bitmaps. Um, on your laptop screen or on your phone screen, if you looked close enough, you would see tiny, tiny, tiny pixels. Each of those are little uh, boxes that can be filled with different colors. And so that's how images are created, by filling all those little boxes. Um, when you have a bitmap image, what it actually does is saves um, kind of electro an, an electronic record of each of those boxes onto your computer. And so if you have a file like a JPEG, um, which you're familiar with from uh, photographs, that's one way of storing um, these bitmap um, images and all of the different pixels and the information in the pixels. Um, you also have PNG images or GIFs or GIFs, however you want to pronounce it. Um, these are good for images that have limited numbers of colors. Um, so like graphs that you create in R or in Excel, that's great um, for those types of things. You don't want to use JPEGs for those, and we'll show some examples of that. Um, another way of working with images is um, images as vectors. And so this is more of a mathy way of representing things. Um, if you look at the picture here, rather than having pixels, you have these dots, and then there's these lines that are drawn between each of these dots. And those lines are like mathematical equations um, that define kind of the angle and the curvature of each of those lines. And so vectors are super important um, because they can be scaled up and down infinitely. If you want to zoom in um, on this 1992, and you could look, you could keep zooming in very, very closely, and you wouldn't ever see any pixels. You could also blow this up to be billboard sized, and it would look great on a billboard because it's just mathematical equations that are getting bigger and smaller. If you take kind of a low quality JPEG that you took um, from a digital camera in like 2005, um, and you try to blow that up onto a billboard, it's just going to look like giant boxes um, because it doesn't have all of the math equations in there to let you go up and down and big and small. It's just a whole bunch of square colors. And so if you make that too big, you can't really scale that up. Um, fonts on your computer are designed as vectors. That's why you can make uh, fonts in Word be like 200 point and then shrink it down to like six point. And there's no pixelation that you get when you do that. Um, when you create images in R, um, most of the graphs that you'll be making are going to be vector based. Um, and so you can zoom in infinitely and zoom out infinitely on the graphs that you're making. And so these types of graphs are um, best saved as PDF, which is uh, kind of the more universal way of, of saving things that are vector based, or this SVG format, which are often used for vector images online. If you go to Wikipedia, and look at different um, flags for different countries. Most country flags are uh, presented there as SVGs, and so you can zoom in infinitely on different flags. Um, it, nowadays, most browsers support SVG. Um, that used to not always be the case, and so lots of websites, even if they have an SVG, um, they'll also offer like a PNG version of it. And so for this class, when you export your graphs, what I make you do is I make you export them as PDF um, so that you can print that and you can do things um, in print design with that. But I also make you export them as PNG files. And so, they, so those can go onto the internet and into HTML files and into Word files um, and 
it, it's kind of more accessible. And so I make you export both um, for use with different audiences. Okay, so some good examples of, of why we like to use PNGs for graphs versus, and not use JPEGs for graphs is because PNGs and GIFs and GIFs were invented for graphs with few color, or images with few colors. And so if you look at this, this picture here, we have black, we have kind of six different colors here, and, and that works. And so internally, what PNG files do is they look for whole fields of the same color, and then they save that as one big blob of information instead of trying to save each individual pixel. Um, and so that's kind of the computer science behind these PNG files. And so this is just a standard PNG file here. If you zoom in, you can see the edges kind of start getting rough looking. Um, there is some pixelation there, but this whole purple area is kind of the same purple. You don't have different colors that are bleeding into that. It's just one color used throughout, and that's good. Um, if you save this as a JPEG, when it's zoomed out like this, it's kind of in indistinguishable. Um, the file size might be a little bit bigger. It's, this is 161 kilobytes. Before that's 160, so it is a little bit bigger. Um, the problem with using JPEGs, though, is if you zoom in, you start getting weird things called JPEG artifacts. And so if you look here, this blob of purple is no longer the same purple. There's some lighter blues and some lighter purples here. Um, you might start getting weird spots in the middle of the white areas. That's because um, the way JPEGs compress things is they, it tries to make its own blobs of color and it doesn't always do a great job or it's, it's kind of overly ambitious when it makes its blobs of color that it saves behind the scenes. Um, this is super apparent if you do something like a very low quality JPEG. So when you're zoomed out, it looks roughly the same, but even then, if you look carefully, like in this area here, you can see there's different colors in this giant red dot already. Um, if we zoom in, now it starts looking super messy. We have these weird um, gray spots that are kind of floating out in space. This purple dot is no longer uniformly purple. It's got all sorts of weird darker colors. And so that doesn't work very well. Um, another thing that happens with JPEGs is um, if you download this and then upload that to Facebook um, because you think it's super great, Facebook will also resize it and they'll um, kind of recompress it. And so it'll get even worse every time you, you compress and change, the, change the, the compression settings behind it. And so what you end up getting is things like this. Um, if you look at this picture of poor Boromir, um, this has all sorts of awful compression artifacts into it, it's getting indistinguishable from what it's supposed to be okay. um, because of JPEG compression. And so you don't want to do that to your graphs because then you know, important findings that you have in there will get lost. And sometimes people, people will see like points in your scatter plot and not be able to tell if they're actual points or if they're just weird JPEG blips that snuck in. Um, there's this XKCD comic that is related to this um, that just shows that if you're saving things as JPEG, um, they'll just degrade over time and you get like awful pixelated versions and with watermarks and all sorts of stuff. Um, and so you don't want this happening to your, your art and your designs that you'll be creating for this class. And so you do want to kind of avoid JPEGs when you're working with uh, data visualizations. It is good to use JPEGs. JPEGs were invented for photographs. That's what the P in JPEG stands for. Um, because when you have a picture like this, and so this is uh, my son from a few years ago, when you have a picture like this, you don't really care about the perfect, like a, a, perf a pixel perfect representation of every single color in here. If there's some blurring of colors, like right here, um, it's fine to have kind of a darker blue and a lighter blue that gets all mixed together because it's not really, you can't really see that very well. Um, in a photograph. It's fine to have colors mixed together. Um, using JPEGs with photographs is great because it shrinks them down. And so I took this picture with a, a fancy digital SLR camera using no compression. And so that one picture is almost 30 megabytes, which is gigantic. Um, shrinking that down to 75% quality JPEG like brings it down to just 10% of what the original was, which is cool. Like That's easier to email to people. Um, even if 
uh, if I want to post this to like Facebook, what they'll do is they will shrink um, the quality of the picture down even more um, to the point where it's really small, but the it's still going to look good. If you saved this picture here as a PNG file, it's going to be bigger than the JPEG um, because it's going to try to maintain every single pixel and make it like the same color throughout and not blur any of the pixels, and you don't want that because that's gigantic. Um, so in general, what you want to do is use the right file type for the image that you have. Um, and in the, uh, in the lesson for today, the interactive lesson, I, there's a section there where it shows you different images and it asks you what you should save it as. Should you save it as a JPEG or save it as a PNG or a PDF? Um, the easiest way to remember this is photographs are JPEGs. If you have anything with a graph or a logo or something with minimal colors, that's where you're going to want to save it as um, PNG or PDF. And so that's, that's kind of the, the easy way to remember this. Photographs are JPEGs. Graphs and logos are either PNG if it's going on the internet or into Word, or a PDF if you're going to print it and use it in, in print design. And so that, that's the easy way to remember that. Um, how do you make these things and how do you edit these things? Um, in general, you'll use photo apps to deal with photos. And so Photoshop is kind of the industry standard for this. There are also free uh, open source version of Photoshop called GIMP. Um, there's a free version of Photoshop-ish type thing called Canva that you can use online. Um, your phone can do uh, edits. Um, Instagram lets you do edits, like there's all sorts of things that lets you edit photos. And so that's that's what you use for that. For vector images, you use something like Adobe Illustrator, um, which lets you edit the 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 weird curves and the mathy equations that you that you have to work with with vectors. The nice thing about the nice thing about Illustrator is you don't actually look at formulas. Um, even though you're working with math, um, you're just working with curves and you're zooming in and making like big rectangles of, of colors and lines and other stuff like that. So there's no math involved. It's just a different way of working with pictures than Photoshop. And there's also open source versions of that called Inkscape, which is free. It doesn't work as well as Illustrator, but it's free. Um, there's an online vector editor called Gravit, Gravit Designer. It's free. Um, they have a paid premium version, but you can also just use the free version. If you're combining these things um, into like a single document, like a brochure or a book, then what you end up using is something called InDesign. That's kind of the industry standard for, um, for combining these things. Um, and so that lets you mix text and vector images and bitmaps and photos and everything all together. Um, there's an open source version of this called Scribus, which works okay. Canva, which you can also use for photos, it works fairly, fairly well for making multi-page documents and combining vectors and logos and graphs and photographs and text. And so that's another thing that you can use. Um, in this class, you'll be doing R to create graphs, um, which you'll then export as a PDF or a PNG. If you want to edit those graphs later, you can actually open the, the PDF that you create in R and open that in Illustrator. And then you can make edits to it in Illustrator um, directly to kind of the, the curves and the dots and the other vector elements, which is cool. And we will be doing that later in the class. Um, in one of the later sessions, we'll, we'll take a, a kind of a plain image from R, export it as a PDF, and then make it fancy and enhanced in Illustrator. And so that's how you work with these different types of images.